Hello and welcome to the podcast for and about Detroit artists and entertainers. I am Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. And today on the show, we're going to talk about acting and directing in the city of Detroit and the surrounding areas as well, because there's a lot going on in the Michigan theater scene. Joining us for this conversation is a woman who, of course, is a director and actress and does a lot of other stuff as well, Cassandra Freeman. Hello. You have uh, a show that is closing this weekend at the Detroit Repertory Theater. This is one that you've directed. It's called The Puppeteer. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so we're um, we're in our final uh, our final weekend at the uh, Detroit Rep, which is right on Woodrow Wilson, and uh, yeah, we're closing the Puppeteer. It was written by Desiree York, and it's starring Indigo Colbert and Jane McClendon, Connie Cowper, and Aaron Kotke. It's a wonderful show. All right, well, we're gonna dig into that. Uh, we're glad you're here. Stick around. All right. Becky, before we get to all that, we always like to start our episodes with a little bit of trivia. What have we got today? Absolutely. So I thought this week I'd talk about St. Patrick's Day, which is happening a week from today, next Tuesday. So it's definitely a celebrated holiday here in Detroit by many, uh, you know, wearing your green, drinking your green beer, eating your corned beef, you know, all the proper Irish things (laughs) that are required. Uh, Of course, for... uh, St. Patrick's Day in Detroit, it's sort of centered around Corktown. Now, that's Detroit's oldest neighborhood. It's named for Ireland's County Cork, where many of the Irish immigrants came from. Uh, You know, the potato famine was going on in Ireland, fleeing the country. Many from the County Cork ended up settling here in the Detroit area. So as a whole, we don't necessarily have one of the biggest celebrations on the lines of Chicago or something like that, but we have among the oldest of the celebrations in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, in what year did the first St. Patrick's Day celebration take place in Detroit? What year was the first St. Patrick's Day celebration in, in Detroit. In Detroit. Ooh. I don't know. Let's see. It's Let's one see. of the Let's oldest? See. Yes, in the U.S. It's one of the oldest in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. We, all right. Do we th- you think it starts with a 17, an 18, or a, it does, it's not a 19? No, it's not a nine, definitely not a 19. So I'm thinking 18-ish. <laughs> right? Uh, so, Straight up 18? Yeah. Somewhere into, all right. Eight, give us a hint. What 18, century is it in? Okay, it starts with an 18. It starts with an yeah. 18. All right, okay. Yes. So what other like things I'm... happened in, in the 1800s? There was a civil war. There <laughs> well, was. that was 1865. That was yeah, 1865. That's all I know. That's it. Yeah. There, oh, wait, there was the War of 1812. Mm-hmm. When did that happen? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't look that up. Do you think yeah. it happened before or after the Civil War? I think it happened before. Uh, all right, I'm going to go with 1835. Um, 1851. Okay. It's even older. Really? Do you want one more guess? No. 1808. 1808. <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel like I cheated. Wow. That's a yes. long time. That's a lot of uh, 1808. That's a lot of whiskey over the years. I know, and it was mainly religious to begin with, of course. Of course. <laughs> Before oh, of it started course. becoming sure. all about wearing green and eating good food. So, Cassandra, yes. uh, we want to talk more about The Puppeteer. So it has final shows this weekend. Kind of tell us what it's about. It is um, It is a multi-generational story. Um, one woman, um, one actor tells uh, uh, stories of her grandmother, her great-grandmother, and her mother. And um, and so we see how racism has evolved in the country um, through, these, through, generations. through these generations. Yeah, and how um, each generation has dealt with it and kind of circle back to the present day. So it starts in um, the Harlem in Harlem in uh, 1920s, and it runs up through the present day. So it's oh, a really, cool. really, yeah, it's a really um, interesting story. And all of the changes happen on stage, like all of the costume changes. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's a it's a very interesting device. And I was um, trying to stage it. I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. If people are going to be able to follow the story, but they have. They've been really receptive. So I'm proud of it. Does that make your life easier to have the costume changes on stage? Uh, no, no, no. Because there, you know, there's some air of mystery. You want people to be able to, um, you know 
have a clean break, right? right. Between yes. the scene that just happened and the next scene that's coming up. And there's this kind of merging in this. Yeah, that's not know, behind yeah. the scenes anymore. No, it's not behind the scenes. It's all happening um, right there. And they, you know, the costumes layer on top of one So another, was that so. one of your biggest challenges for this one in terms yes. of directing? And, 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 um, it kind of circles back to the to the very beginning at the end. And so just making sure that the audience would be able to follow the story because it is one actor playing um, multiple characters, characters yeah. that are all named the same name. Oh, Whoa. geez. So it's like, okay, so oh. this, isn't, this isn't hard at all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and so I just being sure that the, the audience was going to be able to follow it was, you know, my biggest concern. But they have been. They have been. Probably so. a credit to, well, you're directing, yeah. but also the actress. So, oh, my goodness. It yeah. must be pretty they incredible. are pretty incredible. Incredible, all of them. Um, Indigo, I was Indigo Colbert is um, playing the lead, um, playing Constance, and I saw her in a production, and I couldn't keep my eyes off of her. She's mm. just she has a really, really quiet presence, but it's really strong, it's Magnetic. commanding. Mm-hmm. And um, then Jane McClendon walked in. She's uh, trained at, at Brown and, and at Tisch. And um, wait, Brown University? Yeah, look at that. Yes. Yes. I, yeah. I'm a He's Brown no grad. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, you got to come and check her out. So. It's this final weekend, and uh, so she came in, and she's just effervescent and and a wonderful, wonderful actor. I mean, really, really strong. And so I knew. Um, pretty quickly, you know, that I wanted to go with her. Mm-hmm. And then Connie Culper is um, a longtime friend and a very, very talented actress. And so I reached out to her. And then Aaron Cocky rounds out the cast. He's the only guy in the cast. Okay. So he has his work got out Lucky for him. Lucky him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah balancing It's got to be that. cool to be able to work with friends, too, yes, that you know are is. talented and showcase them. And, and to know that they trust me. You know, because, yes. you know, to to work with them, I've, I've worked with Connie as a peer. Um, so to be able to put on the hat of a director and have her trust me um, is, is it was it was an honor. That's Can we awesome. talk a little bit about the art of directing? Yes. I mean, when you mm-hmm. where do you start when you get a script? Mm-hmm. What and you're doing your first read through what's yeah. going through your head and what are you thinking and how are you starting to lay it out? So I, I uh, approach um, directing very much the same way I do um, as acting. I tell my I tell actors when I walk into the rehearsal room, um, I'm an actor first. So I look for the things that I feel, you know, I look for the things that, that really resonate with me as a person, you know, so regardless of what the story is, what what did I feel when I read this line? Mm-hmm. If something doesn't ring true, I'll make note of that. I mean, constant contact, especially if it's a world premiere, you know, um, as this was, as oh. the puppeteer was, um, I'm in constant contact or I try to be in contact with the playwright as much as they will allow because sure. we, we have agreed to produce the play as it is. Um, but I'm hopeful and usually they are very, very receptive and Desiree York who wrote this play, uh, was very receptive to hearing things like if, if something didn't ring true, um, Then I would contact her. And the interesting part about um, The Puppeteer is that it's centered around an African-American woman and Desiree is not that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I was um, happy that she was willing to listen, you know, when something didn't feel right or um, something felt like it needed to be um, elongated or even truncated. Um, she 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 was willing. So it was great. When you say that it's a world premiere, what does that mean for Mm -hmm. a playwright? Mm -hmm. You know, at this point in their career. Yeah. Yeah. So it can mean a different things depending mm-hmm. upon the playwright. Sure. Um, but she was, she was very excited. So it is the first time that um, an audience is seeing the play produced in, in totality. Right. Wow. So they may have done readings of it, but this is the first time they're seeing all of the design elements come together. So um, the actors and the direction and the costuming and the lights and, you know, all of the things that make us, believe that we're in a world that's not the one that we're you know currently occupying so yeah yeah. Yeah. and how did it end up to be that the world premiere of this particular play Mm -hmm. found its way to Detroit Rep so um the Detroit Repertory Theater has a um a wonderful playwrights program where they welcome people to submit scripts and they read them all and it is is like a mountain of scripts in my office and in Leah's office um where you know Barb, everybody they're they're all over the place, and we actually read through them and we critique them. We don't have um, a development program where we you know workshop it, right? So it has to be ready for the stage when you send it. Okay, and um, then we'll you know if it goes through several rounds of critiques, we pass it on. You know, decide whether or not it's something um, that we want to do, and then we narrow it down to a small amount of scripts, and then we vote. 
Wow. Four productions. How many are you so, guys reading? Yeah, uh, what's the value? Oh, we're, we're, we're reading hundreds, you know. A wow. Season. Yeah. So aspiring playwrights out there yes, can just absolutely. mail them in. Yes, yes they can yeah. just mail them this in. This is a huge opportunity. And so, and so it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, and and you know that your your play is actually being read. Red. Wow. Mm-hmm. Is that how it works? I mean, it's not like a website that you all upload it to or anything like that. No. You just you just no, they put it in it, a they, Manila yeah, envelope yeah. and but because the unique thing about the Detroit Repertory Theater is that it's still run by the same people who founded it in 1957. Wow. So a lot of the um, a lot of the <laughs> ways that we go about doing things is is very much. Um, um, a little older. You're not you finding know? your new play on TikTok. We're, is not what you're saying. Our, we're not finding our new play on TikTok. We're not doing it on the new play exchange. We're actually interacting with playwrights okay. um, who trust us enough to send us their babies. Yeah. And we, you know, we review them and then, you know, then they might That's end cool. up on stage. It's really, really cool. Yeah. It's really now, cool. Now, what would you say just in terms of the overall climate of theater in Detroit, kind of the pluses, minuses, challenges? What's what's the environment like? Yeah, the um it's 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 good. It's good. What I love about um this community is that it's so supportive. You know, um, we're a very, very tight knit community because we often feel like the underdog. Uh, you know, we feel like the the flyover in terms uh, of the arts and culture opportunities uh, yeah, in the city. The opportunities, okay. the um, the talent that uh, people outside of this market think mm. is here. So we feel like we have mm-hmm. a chip on our shoulder. We have a lot to prove. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're very supportive of one another. All of the theaters um, support the other theaters. I, I guess the only drawback is that many of the theaters are so uh, spread out. Sure. You know, so you have the Detroit rep um, actually in the city, has been in the city since 1957. Um, Detroit Public Theater is also within the city limits. But beyond that, um, all of the other professional equity theaters. Right, right, right. Not community are, yeah, theater. Not, not community theaters, yeah. yeah. Professional equity theaters are largely outside of the city and, and quite a distance, you know. So mm-hmm. um, the Purple Rose, I'm a resident artist out there, but that's nice. in Chelsea. Right. Um, Tipping Point is in Northville, I believe. Right. And then Williamston is obviously in Williamston, which is right outside of Lansing. And so you have Kickshaw is in Ann Arbor. Yeah. Uh, so you have, you know, you have to travel great distances to get to. You know, we've talked about places. other forms of art mm-hmm. where... You know, for example, we, we've heard about chefs who have come to Detroit specifically to come to Detroit. In, yeah. in the world of theater, yeah. do people come to Detroit to work in theater or is it like it is in stand-up comedy where people go to New York or L.A. or maybe Chicago when they're from here? Yeah, I th- there's a lot of that. There's a lot of, you know, you graduate um, or you, you've, you know, you get to a certain point in your career and you feel like you have to go to these other markets, what a lot, which a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. And so the ones, the actors who remain here, that's what I mean. That's why we're so tight knit right. because we, you know, we have to support one another so that mm-hmm. um, we can continue to, you know, produce great work. Let's mention an uh, artist opportunity. If you want to become a vendor at Eastern Market, this is new vendors only. This is not reapplying for old vendors. Uh, You can do that. The deadline to apply is March 14th. Uh, All the details are at easternmarket.org. We like to do shout outs here on the podcast. Becky, you want to start? Yeah, so I am going to shout out... uh my tour company, Feet on the Street Tours, just because we have some new exciting tours on the docket. So brand new tour we developed for this spring. It's a strolling brunch tour of the Midtown Cass Corridor area. So this is where we talk about history, architecture, art and music, places to hang out. Um, we cover the new housing, new retail restaurants, and all along the way, we pop into several classic spots as well as brand new spots to have bites to eat. So it's enough for a whole brunch. Can you give us uh, some hints of the places that you stop into? Are you allowed? Uh, Is that frowned upon in the tour business? Well, I don't want to give it all away. But that's a big enough clue that there's some establishments that have been there forever that are, you know, we want to bring people into. And then some literally hot off the press brand new spots. All right. Cassandra, anybody you want to give a shout out to? I want to shout out Detroit Public Schools. Oh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, I was sitting here and I was thinking about it. And um, it is where I received my education, where I choose to educate my children. So they're doing a lot of great things. And I'm, I'm really, really proud of um, just the diversity, right, and the, the um, options that you have when you're 
when you're a graduate of Detroit Public Schools. So yeah, I want to shout out to Detroit like Public that. Schools, DPS. Nice. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Sean Forbes uh, and the success that he's had recently. He just had a debut album. It's called Little Victories. It's the number one hip hop album on Amazon and iTunes. Uh, uh, in fact, it's number one for all categories uh, on Amazon. and has been charting on Billboard as well. But here's the thing. He's deaf. Really? Yep. Yes. That yep. is amazing. He uh, lost his hearing uh, to a fever as a young child, but he's from a family of musicians. Okay, uh, he can play the drums, uh, and and you watch him, and you know you. I mean, you can understand all mm-hmm. the lyrics and everything. He's he's quite amazing when you start to see videos of this guy, and so you can start yes. to see why he's he's. Doing really well. And he's, he's inspirational. He's doing a lot of stuff. He's the founder of D-Pan, which is a uh, sign language channel. Uh, so doing some really impressive stuff. But that's really cool. A, yeah, a deaf rapper doing it really, really well. Really, really cool. It also means that we have three Detroit rappers who are all on the charts at the same time. Because Eminem is up there yeah. and Royce to 5'9 is on there as well. Yeah, very cool. Cassandra Freeman is directing The Puppeteer, which runs through this weekend uh, at the Detroit Rep. So go check it out while you still can. What else is going on at the Detroit Rep? So next uh, up, we have opening on March 28th, Rules for Active Shooters. And that is um, written by Frankie Little Hardin. And it is directed by Leah Smith, who's the incoming artistic director at the uh, Detroit Rep. So we're really, really excited about that. And when does that start? It starts March 28th and it runs through uh, May 17th. And it's um, primarily centered around uh, two uh, characters, but there are four characters in the show. And okay. Yeah, it's really, really, it's really, really exciting. Um, it's the first time we've, we're doing a, a one act. So we're oh. doing it without an intermission, wow. which is huge at the Detroit Repertory oh, Theater. Oh, okay. You know, the Detroit Rep is synonymous for having intermissions where you can go grab some You got that bar you, you got to use. You got a bar you got to use. You have you people gotta, hang out, yeah. You go get some great food. Um, but this one is a really, really intense script and it's riveting. You need to stay. You stay have to stay. And you see have it to through. Stay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. I want to let you know that we have a mobile app go download it it'll work on your iphone and your android phone and it has all kinds of bonus interviews that you can't hear in the regular podcast all right becky let's close out with a song what do you got sure this song is called love is a war by jamie Orr. uh she wrote it a couple years ago uh, although i just discovered her but uh this is the first original song she wrote it was after a horrible breakup uh her alternative uh, kind of pop rock sound um you may make you think of paramore pink uh so here is love is a war Cool, until tomorrow, Detroit's moving. Keep up. I don't want to let this go. Don't know if I still love you so. We're both putting up a fight. But we both know it's not right. la da la